How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now, I have this solar-powered shed where I want to get my 360-watt MC4 cables through this sidewall so I can easily connect them to a portable power station inside, which powers this entire shed. Now, whether you're also trying to use a portable power station or you have a complete DIY setup where you have your charge controller, some assortment of batteries, and then most likely an inverter, Either way, this is gonna to pertain to getting cables through your wall in a watertight manner without spending a ton of money or a ton of time. So let's jump into it. So right on the back corner of the shed, and I wanna bring these positive and negative cables right through the sidewall directly in because my portable power station is right on the corner of the shed here. To do that, we're just gonna use this little weather proof cable entry bulkhead you can get off amazon you'll see a link in the description for your reference this one specifically will use gland connectors and that's how you get your weather tight seal but you also can get ones with mc4 right here so maybe for you you'd like to actually plug the mc4s in because i am going to have to clip these off and put new connectors on but you could go right into here and then on the back side, you would just have wires that you could wire into maybe a junction box and then run that to your charge controller or your portable power station. So let's go ahead and start getting this mounted. Now again, I'm gonna clip off these MC4 so I can get the gland connectors mounted, which will give us that weather tight seal. Now I just have this iCrimp MC4 crimping kit. It has everything I need. It has wire cutters, crimper, it has some pins and a few MC4 connectors. So there'll be a link in the description just in case you need that. It's relatively inexpensive and great for these DIY solar projects. So now I'll be able to get those gland connectors on and I'll go ahead and get my pin back on and that's the male pin with that female housing. Now I probably should have left off that plastic housing at this step and you'll see why here in a second. But we'll put that other pin on, that's the female pin, get our gland connector on and then I put the plastic housing again. And why I probably should have left those out because now I need to get those nuts off because those need to come through the inside once I have the gland connectors to the overall weather weatherproof housing, right? So now you need to pass those back through. So they do come over the MC4 plastic housings, but not very easily. So you gotta kind of fight with them. So if you leave those on, just have the pins on, then you can get everything mounted and then put your black MC4 housing on. And it just make it a little bit easier in terms of the order of operations. So then I'll check the slack I have on my wires and just see where I want that mounting location. I am gonna mount it sideways. If you had some extra slack, it is always good to go down and loop down the lowest point here and then back up. And then that would be a drip point. So if water flowed down your cables, it would drip off here. Here, there is a possibility that water would come here and the gland connector should be waterproof, but there would always be water kind of flowing down here. So I am a little bit limited on my slack. So I can't do too much about it, that on this installation, but just for you, if you have a little bit more slack, go ahead and put yourself a drip loop in there. But for now, I'm gonna drill a inch and a quarter hole right through the back here so I can pass the wires through this siding. Go ahead and make sure my gland connectors are tight. You do not need to over tighten things. What I'm trying to do is just compress this gasket here to give us a sealing surface. So once we're ready to mount, then I'll go ahead and use some 100% silicone and just go ahead and put a healthy bead all along this flange right here. And then start to set that into the final mounting location. And you would want to see that silicone squishing out all the way around to make sure we have a nice weather tight seal on all four of our sides. Now remember, this is a DIY shed. This is just me doing my own projects. Depending on what jurisdiction you're in and what codes you have to follow, this shed might need to be grounded. 
Uh, just having cables going over asphalt shingles like this could be a definite problem in multiple other codes, just depending on your area. So you check your local area to make sure you don't run into any issues. One thing I do want to do is protect these wires a little bit because they will be rubbing back and forth, which you would not want on asphalt shingles because that obviously will cut away the insulation. So I am going to do several wraps here. So then this hopefully takes the brunt opposed to the insulation on our solar cables. So now we have those MC4 connectors inside the shed. You can see them kind of above in the loft area. That's where I plug my conversion cable, which goes from MC4 to XT60i. And then that's what goes in my Delta 2, which is the power plant behind this off-grid shed. Remember, this is a completely DIY project, but if you need reference to the parts that we use, look down in the description, and hopefully that'll help you out on your own project. Now, if you're looking to really step up in terms of a professionally installed system on your home to offset or eliminate your monthly power bill, check the link in the description. Just a couple minutes, you can go through your monthly power bill, a few details on your home, and then get an estimate on the size and cost that you would need for that type of system. Then if that looks like something you wanna investigate further, they can also connect you with local installers will give you actual quotes and then you can start to do your due diligence if that installer is the right partner for you. Now this shed has a bunch of different projects on it. You can see the ground mounted panels that's 200 watts worth of solar panels I actually trenched in. So you can check out this video right here. I'll show you the ground mount system and then check out this video right here for the trenching project where I actually made some custom boxes with MC4 connectors coming out of them which might actually help you with your own DIY solar projects around the house. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.